it's been a terrible week for news, especially for a satirical news show like this one. There are, of course, no laughs to be had from the atrocities in Paris. The images the world saw last Friday were sickening. So, as a caveat at the top of the show, let me put on record that we are absolutely and vehemently against terrorism. And while we're at it, here are some other things that we're against. Nazis, Jimmy Savile, murder. But, of course, it would be insulting to your intelligence and borderline insulting to the people of Paris to bang on about the bleeding obvious, right? Some things just don't need to be said. But that hasn't stopped people saying it all over Facebook and Twitter for the past week. At a time like this, when the world has borne witness to such tragedy and we have, as a human race, shared in all that pain and horror together, well, it really brings out the worst in us. I mean, all due respect, but social media this week was a right sack of dickheads, wasn't it? <laughs> like Rupert Murdoch. He tweeted, Obama facing enormous opposition in accepting refugees maybe makes special exception for proven Christians? What do you want them to do? Come in on a fucking ark? Bring some myrrh? Then there were the dickheads who suddenly dressed up the self-indulgent bullshit they fill their ridiculous lives with as acts of defiant heroism. ISIS didn't think that they'll scare me out of going down the pub to neck a ton of WKDs tonight. I shall not be cowed. I, for one, refuse to let these jihadists intimidate me out of going to the Apple store and using my credit card to buy an iPad mini. I'm on a bus in London. Fuck you, terrorists. Come on. Some people got murdered by a bunch of twats 500 miles away. You are not at war. Westfield Shopping Centre is not the front line. You didn't bravely throw yourself on a grenade to save your mates. You're just another bullshitting narcissist with an oyster card. But let's not forget those who really did stand up and show courage this week. Like the spine-tingling display of unity from football fans. This was humanity at its best. <laughs> Stand up if you hate ISIS. And look at that. Some of them really did stand up. That'll show them. Imagine all those jihadis sitting back after a hard week of terror to enjoy the League Two all-important six-pointer clash between Portsmouth and Wimbledon. I bet they're quaking in their desert boots. <laughs> then you've got the dickheads lecturing us for caring too much about the French because there's other dead people in other parts of the world that we didn't care about enough as well. It's not enough to care, you see. You have to care in the right way. I mean, look at all the sticks guys Kay Burley got on Twitter for this. Sadness in his eyes. All she did was try and capture the mood of the Western world through the medium of a dog's face. <laughs> and everyone takes the piss. I tell you what, taking that pic takes a lot more effort than sticking a French flag on your Facebook profile picture. I tell you what, it's a good bloody photo. Could win one of those wildlife photography awards <laughs> if dogs count as wildlife. I don't know, ask Chris Packham. This is a bloody serious news show. Uh, panel, Paris, what the fuck? Well, Sam Delaney, I think the people of Paris must have been thrilled to hear from high-profile names like Kim Kardashian. Mika had something very powerful to tweet. He said, Paris, in my heart and my thoughts. Now, yeah. if I, if, you know, well, I had been in Paris at that moment and knew people trapped uh, in a club with terrorists, that would have really set my mind at ease. Isn't that Nice to specify as well, mm. not just in my heart, but also in my thoughts exactly. too. It's very, very important, the and detail. And very typical Miko, you know, bringing a spin no one had thought of. It's Do you classic know what I mean? Miko. One, mm. who's Miko? Two, <laughs> um, it's better than, I mean, they can't do nothing though, can they? You can't, like, if, you, if you're you really can. big. I did nothing. I did nothing. I did nothing, but we're not, it's like when celebrities do charity work. Mm. Good for them. You've got to do something. What bothered me, so, like, yeah, people put up their Facebook thing, they're like, we stand with Paris, and they've done nothing. They're like, oh my God, croissants, I eat croissants, Facebook. <laughs> and uh, it just, what bothered me was the international silence for other atrocities. Like, mm. I don't know if you saw it, but in Australia, Mexico, Brazil, the UK, it was like the French tricolours everywhere, mm. projected up on their buildings, where like, we stand with Paris. And then Beirut, 40 people were bombed, and they're like, so are we gonna do the Lebanese flag? And they're like, I don't know how to do the tree, so maybe we just leave it. And they're like, what about Nigeria? Like, I, I mean, um, yeah, Nigeria, they're but, like- but Hang on, this is a serious point there, David. I mean, you know, people, I felt guilt in the end for being sad about France and being told that I wasn't sad enough about other countries where tragedies had happened. But this is media, uh, this is person. But you've only got enough giving a shit about other people in your heart 
are, and I kind of piled it all into France because I was ignorant of these other things. That's think, okay, isn't it? I think that's the point. You know, people go on holiday in Paris. You know, people in the Western world from Australia, that's UK, That's the thing. It's US. the Western world. It's like, oh, what skin color? Oh, I care well, about you. I mean, it's no, a, it's surprise, not surprise. That. People can't even pick out Kenya on a map much mm -hmm. less, you know, understand the, the dynamics of what's going on there, terrorism-wise. Beirut, God love Beirut, but listen, 40 people dying in the market in Beirut is not that unique. Did it anger you at any point, Lusanda, some of the stuff you might have seen on social media? I felt there was a lot of narcissists out there who used it as an excuse to talk about what lovely lifestyles they had. <laughs> because I had a few friends on Facebook who would just write long descriptions of their lovely, comfortable, bourgeois lifestyles at the end, then able to say, huh, really makes me appreciate it. <laughs> really makes me appreciate my Nespresso machine <laughs> that I just got from John Lewis. I, and it's really, this is, I can't believe it, but you're using a human tragedy in yeah. Paris to brag about your new coffee machine. Yeah. But I think these people aren't really happy because if they were, they wouldn't have to go on Facebook. They'd be there enjoying the espresso, enjoying the coffee. not writing yeah. about it, trying to get you to know about mm, their lives. Exactly. Maybe that that's it. Uh, this is not the big issue. Really? No, that's the, I agree with you. It's not the big issue, but have you had espresso from an espresso machine? Mm. It's pretty good. It's, it's, delicious. Worth, it's really it's worth bragging about. It depends on it's the machine. Delicious. Maybe no. they were so hyped up on the caffeine that they couldn't keep their fingers away from the laptop. They're like, oh, God, I'm it's writing about everything great in my life. I think and there's one thing we can all agree on is that there's something worth defending. It's the delicious coffee of Nespresso. Mm. And that's exactly the kind of device that no doubt these jihadists would deem to be decadent. Exactly. Mm.